No, good morning, fellowship. How are you guys doing? Good to see you here. I'm just uh, figuring out this new little interface in Facebook. But it's uh, good to see you. Good morning, Rhonda and Jim. Good to see you guys. Hey, Emily. How are you? Kathy, good to see you. It is good to be here on a Friday. Hey, Ellen, how are you? Good to see you. And Joe, good morning, Joe, Jennifer. Happy Friday. A little bit of coffee and Jennifer's emoji there like that. That's uh that's what we need to get uh, to get a good Friday going, right? Matt Clark, how are you, sir? Good to see you. So uh, it's 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 hard to believe that it's another another week coming to an end. Good morning, Lisa. How are you? Good to see you. Um, it's uh it it's hard. I've I'm reflecting on. You know the fact that we're now seven weeks into um, uh, quarantine and being stuck at home. Christine, good to see you. Candice, how are you? Good to see you. It's it's really hard to believe that we're uh, uh, we're seven weeks into uh, a quarantine. It's almost two months that I've been quarantined and working from home and. And I don't know if you're like me, but um, I think I'm getting a little stir crazy and the weather has, uh, you know, has just got a break and get nice so we can be outside. Um, and, uh, and and I've just been really reflecting on that really the last the last couple uh, last couple of days. Um, life has really changed a lot in this time. You know, we're we're not eating at our at our favorite restaurants. We're not going to hair salons or barbers, although uh, Joe and I are, seem to be doing just fine with the DIY uh, haircuts, right, Joe? Uh, but some of us are concerned about health issues and safety in the middle of this virus. And many of us are impacted with the loss of jobs or uncertainties about how to pay the bills. Um, some of us are just going a little stir crazy, spending two months at home. And during these uncertain times, it's natural for us to be scared or anxious. But as I wrestled with some of this in my own this, this past week, God reminded me in Candace's message that was so good that he's got this. That's what the Bible says. When we're facing the unknown, when we're afraid, and when we're anxious, God's there, and God's got this. And that's not only what God, God has. He wants to be with you in this. He wants to take your hand. He wants to give you strength. He wants to share the, the hidden things that you don't quite understand. And he wants to take on your anxieties because he cares for you. So this morning, we're going to look at, at three different passages on how to rely on God in uncertain times. And I want to share with you three different examples in my life where I was forced to rely on God. So take one more sip of coffee, and then we'll uh, we'll dive into God's word starting with with Jeremiah, we're going to go to chapter 33 and read verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says this, Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. I love this verse as a reminder that when we're facing the unknown and uncertainties, and right now, let's face it, there's a lot of unknowns and uncertainties in our lives. Right? How are we going to live like this? When will it go back to normal? 
how are we going to start transitioning back to opening our economy and living like we've lived in the past? For many of us, we haven't faced these kinds of unknowns, these kinds of uncertainties ever before. But Jeremiah reminds us to call to God and he will answer us. He will tell us great and hidden things. He will tell us the things that aren't known to us. A few years after graduating from college, I faced one of the, the greatest times of my life. I was 26 years old and Audrey and I had, had just been married and my career was off to a, a good start. Uh, but I noticed these lumps in my neck slowly getting bigger. And after a misdiagnosis and then many more, many more tests and biopsies, it was determined to be leukemia. But fortunately, it was the good leukemia. I don't know if that's that's possible, but that's what I was told. The slow growing kind, um, but the doctors weren't certain about my future. It wasn't a, a it wasn't a health risk in the short term, but it definitely was a health risk in the long term. Maybe you have 10 years, maybe 15. Probably the longest you have is 20 years, but we really don't know. It's slow growing, but someday it might kill you. And over 27 years since this diagnosis, a lot has changed. The medical treatments have dramatically changed from, from toxic chemotherapy that, that kills the cancerous cells and the healthy white cells in the blood to today where doctors and scientists have really identified the engine in the cell that causes it to go cancerous. And with targeted medications, they can turn off this engine. They can stop the cancer engine from running inside my body. And through this time, there's been plenty of times that I've cried out to God about this health, health issue. Many have prayed over it. And what I've come to realize is that God was in the middle of this unknown in my life. God's revealing truth, even in our bodies and our cells, and our DNA structure to doctors and to scientists, things that were not known before. And over and over again, God has shown me that he's got this health challenge. He's got this. And he's walking with me through every step right by my side. And the same is each one of us. When you're facing the unknowns, God's got this. And God will reveal the hidden things that are not known to you or to those around you. The second verse to look at about relying on God in challenging times is Isaiah 41, verse 13. It says, for I, the Lord, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. I love the imagery of God in this passage. God reaches down. He grabs our right hand and says, don't be afraid because I've got this. I'm the one who helps you. It's amazing to me that the God who made the universe, who made everything that we see, wants to help me. And he wants to help you. It's incredible that God wants to help us in our challenges and our struggles. And Audrey and I saw God's help in a big way after some of my first treatments. As I said the, earlier, the, the treatments 25 years ago were crude and toxic. And we didn't realize that one of the treatments, which wasn't working well, and they had to keep upping the dosage, had a side effect, infertility. See, years earlier, we had had Amanda, who was our, was our first child. 
But after several rounds of treatments, we found out that I was given this extremely high dose of chemotherapy. And it damaged me in a way that I wouldn't be able to have children ever again. The doctor said it was impossible for us to have another child. And after many years of praying and lots of people at fellowship who prayed us through that, Audrey got pregnant with Nathan. See, God reached down, grabbed our right hands and said, I got this. Don't be afraid. I will help you. And I think if you're wrestling with fear and doubt in your life, God's message is that he's got this. Are you struggling with the impossible? God says, call out to me, take my right hand, and I will help you. I will make the impossible possible. I will help you. The third passage that I want to look at this morning is from 1 Peter 5, verse 7. It says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. In today's environment, more than a few anxieties between all of us. There's a lot of them. And God says, give them all, every one of them, to me, because I've got this. Are you anxious about contracting the virus? Well, God's got that. Are you anxious about job and income? God's got that too. And are you anxious maybe about being quarantined and stuck at home for nearly two months? And God's saying, I've got that. So you would think that after my first two stories that I shared about the, the big things that God has done in our lives, you would think I wouldn't get anxious about the little things, right? I mean, I've seen God do these incredible big things in our life. And you would think that I would just use God and expect him to be there and to leverage him in all the little things as well. But you'd be wrong. And just week, I was I was feeling anxious. Uh, maybe I've just been in the house. Too. Um, maybe the weather just hasn't been uh, good enough for me to be outside and, and kind of get around. I'm not sure what it was, but it felt like all the little things were just piling up on me. I mean, do you ever feel that way? I'm sure you have. The, you know, in spring time, it feels to me like the yard is a total mess. Weeds are growing everywhere. Mess is like growing like crazy. And there's about a hundred things that need to be done around us, including updating of our house, which we've been in for 20 years. So we started last week by painting the dining room. And in the middle of this project that required four coats of paint to cover the red walls from the 1990s, I only had a little time to cut the grass. And of course, the lawnmower wouldn't start. And I just lost it. I, I blew up. I blew a gasket. I started yelling at the motor. I started yelling at my son. It wasn't pretty. And a long walk to cool down, God talked to me. And he said, why don't you let me help with these little things in your life? Why don't you rely on me to help these, these little things like you do the big things? See, Sometimes it's so easy to rely on God for the big things, but we skip over relying on God for the little things. See, sometimes it's empty of being a guy. And you know what they say about guys is that in our brains, we put things into boxes in our brains. And I do that all the time. I put God in the box with the big in my life. But God wants to be in all of the things, in all of my life. And I think God 
wants to be in all things in your life as well. So here's my challenge for each one of us. If you're if you're facing big things or just a lots of little challenges, if you're if you're facing unknowns, then God's got this, and He wants to share the things that are hidden from you. If you're afraid, then God's got this too. He wants to help you. And if you're wrestling with anxiety, then God's got this too, because He cares. Whether those things are little or big, He's got this. But you have to give it to Him. And allow him to. So I think all the the parts for the mower arrived. Um, it was I ordered the parts last week. I figured a way to get the grass cut by using an old mower. And the, the parts came in. And God said, why don't you do this together with me? Why don't we fix the mower together? Instead of you going out there and trying to do it on your own why don't we do this together and i gotta tell you the parts came in on time i took the parts out and i put them together with no issues it was the simplest repair i thought it was difficult but it ended up going just like clock. it was so easy and at the end of the night i realized god Got that too. Even in those little things, God wants to walk with us. God wants to be with us, and God wants to help us because He cares for us. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, that You care so much about us that You want to help us in the little and the big things in our life. Through the anxiety that we face, through the the things that makes it make us, uh, in the in the things that uh, cause us to be afraid and cause fear, bring fear into our lives, you got there as well. And I, um, I just pray, God, that we uh, we look at the reminder of your word and that uh, we allow you to enter into those things in our life, big or small that we turn those things over to you, as Candace said earlier this week, that, that we give up control and realize that you are God and that you've got this. And that through the end of the, the, that time, the, the great blessing that we receive is, is that we get to enjoy intimacy with you, come closer to you, and allow us at the end of the day to to worship you for a God who is loving and caring enough to be with us, our fears, through our anxieties, and through all the things in this life. And so I just thank you, Lord, for this time. I thank you for these people that are a part of uh, this devotional this morning. I pray, Lord, that your spirit use it and guide it for your glory and for your honor. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, it was great being with you guys all today. I want to send out a Mother's Day wish to all the moms and, and all the real ladies uh, that uh, are in our lives and, and, and love us and care for us uh, as, as our own mothers do. That Mother's Day drive-in service will be this day at 9.30 and 11. I hope that you're, um, you're signed up and that you're, you're excited to be there. We're, we're looking forward to um, it was great to be with you this morning. I hope a great day and, and looking forward to seeing Sunday. Nice. Hope you're all well.